Now, set aside your evening and weekend plans. Could you bring the camera that way so I can actually read the thing? Because the first part of the sixth and final series of The Crown is finally on Netflix. Yes, indeed, the first few episodes Sorry. have dropped. But before we get into our royal... Before we... Before we get into our royal editor, Sarah Houston's review, it's all gone wrong, Sarah. It's going so well. Here is a sneaky peek of the new series. Even though we weren't brilliant at being married, can we, um... Can we be brilliant at all this? I think so. And not just for them, but for us too. get to keep the man of her dreams, but the friend of her dreams. I mean, it's much more than a friend. Wow. Sarah, you've got to tell us, you see a whole lot more to this story. But obviously, it's about separating fact from fiction. Mm. So the clip we've just seen is Diana, William and Harry have just returned from the south of France, where yep. they've been on holiday on the Alfired yacht. And Diana is saying goodbye to the boys for what is the last time. They're going off to Balmoral with their father. And there's that scene there where we see that moment between Diana and Charles of rapprochement and sort of looking to the future as friends rather than, as we know, the very, very, very difficult relationship that they had endured uh, post their separation and uh, divorce. Um, it starts with the moment of the crash in Paris. We don't see the actual crash. We just see the tunnel and we hear the sounds of it. And then we go back and we see Diana's final weeks uh, played out. But you can see there, um, Dominic West as, as Prince Charles softened, I think, from what we've yes. seen in previous series. And this is a very sympathetic portrayal of Prince Charles and the relationship that he was achieving, according to Peter Morgan's version in The Crown, with his ex-wife. I find it, I find it cruelly, I, I keep saying it all morning and I can't change my thought and loads of people have been texting the same. I just have this, I sort of stopped at part three, series three, because uh, the rest is happening, I know what was happening because I was there, that the history side of it is quite important to me. And it feels, and I loved what you said an hour ago when you said voyeuristic, it doesn't feel, I feel, I feel different watching what I'd already reported, listened to, read about or watched. I think when you go back to the initial series of The Crown, you think about Claire Foy as the Queen. The best, by you, the way. Can forgot. I just say this? Claire Foy, for me, streets ahead. Sorry, Imelda Staunton and Olivia Colman. I thought Claire Foy was amazing. And you forgot that you were watching an actress. Yeah, absolutely. You believed that you were watching The Completely. Queen. Completely. It is very different here. Imelda Staunton's portrayal of The Queen is, is very cold, I find. Pinched mouth. You don't see the warmth that she has with her grandchildren uh, particularly. I, I find it quite uncomfortable. You, you can see there yeah. uh, in her face. It's quite a hard watch at that. Um, we see Charles fighting in this portrayal uh, of what happened for Diana to be given rights after her death, to be flown back on mm. the, the royal flight, for the coffin to be draped in the royal standard, for example, telling his mother that the nation needed her to be a mother figure as well as a grandmother to William and Harry. How do you think those two will respond to this briefly? Um, it would be very difficult to watch it. Um, you see uh, in one of the kind of most poignant and, and difficult scenes, you see the final phone call played out they that they have with their that, mother. Yeah. Now, of course, Peter yeah. Morgan doesn't know what happened in that final phone call. This is, is fiction. Um, but um, they have spoken about that phone call and wished that it wasn't so rushed. This is, uh, we see Diana, a bit of a pawn by Mohammed Al-Fayed, her and Dodie being his puppets, really. Yeah. He was trying to orchestrate this relationship. You see her miss her chance to have a phone call with her boys. She does have a phone call with them in which William asks her, are you going to marry Dodie Al-Fayed? And she says, absolutely not. I need to get my life in order. I'm coming back to see you tomorrow. And, of course, she never does. Very briefly, would you, would you advocate it or not? Look, as a piece of entertainment, it is beautifully done. Uh, Elizabeth Debicki as Diana oh, is yeah. flawless, absolutely incredible. But you have to be able to separate the fact from the fiction. Well, thank you so much, Sarah Thanks, Houston, Sarah. for joining us.